Yeah. That's, we got another five kilobyte production going on here today. That's for sure. Of course, the video itself isn't five kilobytes. Hello, this is the cassette master, and um, this will be unboxing number two. Remember back in 2011 during the school semester air time, there was an unboxing video of some recorders sent to me by Amberola 1B on YouTube at Ferraro. Well, we're going to have another unboxing videos because I video because I got some more recorders from him and they came in the mail today so I'll be getting those boxes and filming and unboxing and all that so I have to get the camera set up. Editing will be required. So let's dig through these peanuts. First of all, we have a 7 inch reel. Chances are it has a message on it describing what to do. Oh, good! The knobs and pieces for the other seal and transit tape that I plan to build a wooden case for. Hey Ricky, another tape with another message. A bit of a bit of a longer one. Also inside two sheets of sensing tape tabs to use on your national recorder. They're used for the auto reverse mode, Ed. Of course the same kind of sensing foil could be used on eight tracks as well. So here's the tape. It's a nice oh wow I did not expect to get this much sensing tape. Look at that. Look at how much sensing foil there is. This can definitely come in handy for 8-track tapes for sure. Oh, this is the sticky part will hold up with age that is. Definitely could use that for 8-tracks. Probably will. Um, okay, I've got to find a reel to reel to play this. I just hope it's chipped well. I'm, okay, it is. It is chipped. Well, it's it's protected. I prayed that it would be protected. It is. It's protected. Okay. Let's play it on this. This one's just laying right here. It's a Wallen Sack T1400. I have a 1500 I got pretty recently too, but it's in the other room, so I'm just going to play it on the 1400. This is a recorder I'm going to use to to play the uh, message tape, probably recorded at three and three fourths, maybe seven and one half. If one and seven eighths, I'll have to switch to another machine, but I doubt it's recorded at one and seven eighths. Okay, so let's let's plug this in, and there's a power strip over here with a neon, complete with a neon light indicator. Okay, let's turn it on. Set the tone to my favorite balanced tone. Speeds at three and three fourths. Set the counter to zero. Okay. Got to get a take up reel. I got a. There's a take up reel right here. Here's a take up reel. Stick that on there. And uh, let's get this reel here. Now some of the tape spilled out.
while still. Okay, shred it on here to Scotch tape, which is from 3M Company, and this reel to reel is wall and sack with the 3M Company, so it all goes together. And the take up reel is also a Scotch take up reel, so it does all go together. Threading it upside down for my, of course, of course, the tape has to come out like that, which is really annoying, I say, when it comes and I'm threading it and threading it, that comes right out of that little hole. So I'll hold that with my finger. There we go. And assuming it's at 3 and 4, so I'll have it at that speed. Play. It's going through leader tape right now. Motorola 1B sending you batch of tape recorders. Now the first one I want to describe to you is the Phonotrix tape recorder that I'm sending you. Oh. I know you have one just like this, the square boxy one, but this one comes complete with its original external speaker as well as the original microphone. And I wanted to uh, give you a complete outfit and uh, inside the little leather case. The leather case didn't come to me in very good condition, so I just merely took some duct tape and uh, kind of uh, tried to reinforce the edges and the top uh, hinge so that it would uh, stay together. So that's why it's kind of taped up. Um, I remember you commenting on one of your YouTube clips about how well made these little German machines were, and you are correct. They are well made. There's usually nothing ever wrong with the uh, amplification of them. They all seem to play and record really, really well, and they don't need any work done to them in that department. However, the motors sometimes don't make good contact with the uh, reels to uh, turn the reels while you're recording or playing back or rewinding. So. Uh, usually all you have to do is just adjust the little spring that uh, uh, connects to the motor that adds tension to the uh, rubber flywheel, rubber coated flywheel rather, that uh, drives the whole unit. And uh, that's about all that has to be done to them. And uh, I also remember you commenting on one of your YouTube clips about how the take up on the square boxy one usually isn't all that good as opposed to the rectangular model. Um, the reason why the take up, especially on an empty take up reel, doesn't uh, you know, the, t the tape doesn't catch up very quickly when you're uh, starting an empty reel is because you have to have the special Phonotrix reel which has a bigger hub. Now if you have any small take-up reels that have a large hub on them, it might, it should rather, um, make the tape take up correctly when you're starting out with a fresh empty reel. Um, the only other thing I can think of uh, to tell you about is uh, when you did your YouTube clip on your other Phonotrix tape recorder that you got, you said there was kind of a squeaking sound when you were rewinding the tape. Now, I don't know if that's the motor or not, but I do know that the tape head cover, not the one that you can uh, lift off, but the one that's uh, on the opposite side of it, the one you have the two latches that hold it together on the machine, on either side of that tape head cover, there's like a little metal bearing, and that revolves while the tape is turning. Um, and those usually are a little dry, and all I do is add a small drop of very lightweight motor oil to it, and that usually uh, uh, takes care of the squeak, because uh, I've had the same problem with some of my Phonotrix tape recorders with that issue. And uh, I think that's about all I have to say about that. Oh yeah, one other thing. Uh, when you uh, did your first photo tricks clip on the, the square machine, you said that there was no rewind function to it. Well, it actually does have a re rewind function. Uh, if you just move the lever in the opposite direction, it will rewind the tape. Maybe not very well, not very fast, but it does rewind it. So maybe, you know, the uh, motor isn't making good contact with that flywheel. And uh, if you adjust it a little bit, it should, uh, you know, work pretty good. I think mine still does rewind, so it should work with no problem. And the second tape recorder I'm going to uh, describe to you is the Grundy TK6. Now this tape recorder kind of does work and kind of doesn't. If you try to put it on the slower speed, the motor won't turn all that well if it does turn at all. On the faster speed, it does turn, and uh, sometimes it actually turns up the speed, but then it seems to slow down, so I don't know what's up with that motor. 
but it has some issue. The amplifier seems to work beautifully. I mean, the sound is loud, clear, and uh, there seems to be no problem with the capacitors, so there's no issue there. It's just with the motor. Now, if you'll notice on the back of the machine, it looks like part of the corners of the case were broken off. Well, they were in shipment to me. Uh, this machine came all the way from Greece, and when the guy sent it to me, he said it was in good condition, but I think it might have gone through customs or something because there were broken little pieces of plastic in the box when I got it, and so I tried to take some super glue and glue it all back together, and I think I got all the parts back together, but it came in kind of just so-so condition. Also, on the left-hand side of, no, right-hand side of the machine where there's an open cover, where you can see the power cord and the little inputs and outputs. There used to be a cover there, apparently, because I went on YouTube and viewed a few clips of this tape recorder, and apparently there was a protective cover that went there. Well, it also wasn't there when I got the machine. So um, that was supposed to be in place, but it's not. Also, if you'll notice, the power cord has these round uh, prongs on it, so it's a European plug. Now, Obviously, that was supposed to be used for uh, AC power, but it was also used that if you plug that plug with the prongs into the side of the machine, they were supposed to make contact with a battery pack, which also isn't there, and uh, the guy didn't supply it with me. So when you plugged it into the machine, it was supposed to uh, power it up for uh, portable use. And uh, let's see, what else was I going to say about this machine? Oh, yeah. Um... The way that I was able to get it to uh, power up for me with the AC cord was I just used some alligator clips on a another uh, power cord with the uh, American uh, plug end to it, and I just plugged it into the wall and was able to get the machine to power up. But like I said, there's something going on with the motor where it's not, uh, you know, turning consistently, consistently, and it kind of slows down and stops after a bit. But anyway. I think the only other thing I want to tell you about it is that the uh, inputs and outputs don't aren't really clearly marked with uh, what they are as far as you know describing in words. They have these little cryptic symbols, so I I'm not sure, but I think you probably would know you know what symbol indicates for what, whether it be the microphone or the external speaker or, or earphone or whatever other input or output goes. So. I think that's about all, the only other thing I have to uh, tell you about. Otherwise, the um, um, functions and everything I think are in German, but you should be able to t uh, to tell which is which as far as you know what you know power controls what function. So that's it for that one. And um, let's see, the third one I want to describe is the docorder, and there's nothing wrong with this tape recorder. It fully operates properly, and um, it doesn't need any work. Uh, it has two speeds with a capstan sleeve that fits on. I'm going to read a message written on the um, Grundig TK6. Hey Ricky, I just wanted to post a short note to the Grundig letting you know that on the function buttons that stop is paused <laughs> and halt releases the play, record, fast forward, and rewind buttons so you don't get confused. And on the off switch, and oh, and on off switch is on the right hand knob. I forget if it's the volume or the tone control. You can also go on the internet to translate the German words. A friend of mine told me about a site called Babble Fish. This should help you know just what each word stands for. Very nice. Oh, the German is beautiful. Oh, yes. Let's see if the meter meal can swing whenever I... I... maybe. I don't know. Anyway. Let's carefully take off this tape here. Oh, good! It has reels with it. That's always good because... Um, yeah. How do you open this up anyway? You probably can't even see what I'm doing. Oh good, it has the 4-inch reels with it, so... Yeah, I don't have that many 4-inch reels lying around. I only have four of them. I was lucky enough to get find them at an estate sale, but... I need to wind the tape back. Some of the tape spilled out during shipping. Oh yeah, let's go ahead and... The uh, capstan uh, shaft, and it runs at 3 and 3 quarters and 1 and 7 eighths inches per second. The power cord is stored inside. Uh, underneath the machine in the front there's a little white button that you can pull down 
and it opens up the bottom of the machine and you can pull the power cord out. Now the cord is kind of dried and stiff, but it's not cracked, it's just very stiff, but it still works and I had no problem with it. So that works on AC and uh, the microphone is uh, conveniently stored underneath and uh, it's, it, it's a very good microphone and the amplifier works very good too. In fact, you don't even have to speak loudly into the machine to make it uh, record your voice. You can just you know, talk in a very normal tone. You don't even have to talk loud. And the little uh, recording light fluctuates bright and dark to, uh, you know, indicate that it's uh, uh, recording your voice. So that works. And I think the only thing that I have to say about it is that you don't even need the volume switch turned on or the volume knob turned on to uh, record your voice. You can have it down to zero and it'll still record it. And plus it's got two little... Uh, uh, real hold down screws that hold the reels in place so when you want to carry it with you and you want to record people on the street or record whatever you can have the machine vertical and the reels won't fall off so that's it for that one and let's see what else oh yeah the long awaited gram deck that I know you've been waiting for and I sent you the manuals for that in your uh, first group of boxes that I sent you um, this one works fine there's nothing wrong with the gram deck uh, let's see I'm assuming that you have a good turntable to use to uh, put the Gram Deck on. The only thing you'll need to install it on your... I got a vintage Newcomb record player. I know Spats Bear is going to like that. And Emerson Collie too. That's the one I'm going to use. Turntable is a little, uh, like a rod that fits through that slot on the top of the Gram Deck's bed plate. Uh, now you can install it with the rod either facing in the front of the, the turntable or in the back. Just make sure that the rod is about the same diameter as the, uh, the notch on the uh, gram deck so that it won't uh, wobble back and forth. In other words, you don't want a, a rod that's going to be too thin so the gram deck will wobble while it's playing. But at the same time, the gram deck doesn't have to be bolted down to it. You don't have to bolt it down tight. It just The rod is supposed to just fit through that slot, and uh, the gram deck can just sit freely because if you bolt it down and uh, have it you know, down too tight on one side or the other, then it won't uh, turn freely along with the turntable. Now, I had an idea if you wanted to uh, try it to make your little, you know, setup for your turntable to uh, put the rod on it. Um, what I would do is take an oversized plumber's washer, one of those stepped ones that looks like a little pyramid, and um, put a rod, some kind of rod through it that's going to fit into your gram deck and glue the rod to the washer and then maybe glue the washer down to your turntable in, in a spot where it's going to fit through the slot in your gram deck to hold it there in place. And uh, that might work because my gram deck came with the original little hold down rod and it's just a little plastic thing that has a little base on it that I stuck down with some double back tape but the double back tape doesn't really work all that well so if you want to uh, glue yours down you can. Now I know I um, deleted those YouTube clips that I had of the uh, Gram Deck when I was demonstrating it. I didn't really like them the way they turned out. They was kind of awkward and clunky. You know, I'm not very good at describing things sometimes. So I'm I honestly liked those videos and tried looking for them again recently and found that they were gone. Just deleted them. But uh, I did uh, describe on my Gram Deck uh, that it had like a hum coming through the uh, preamp oh. if you didn't have it grounded. So what I did was I took a ground wire and I connected it to uh, one of the little screws on the preamp with a little alligator clip and then I took another alligator clip and, and connected it to some point on the gram deck and the hum went away. Another use of the gram deck is since it has a separate amplifier um, section, it will be very useful for easily doing silly silly tape recorder by hooking the gram deck's record play amplifier to tape heads of different recorders and for instance how about a high quality AC bias circuit sound on a terrible rim drive recorder? That's one of the experiments that can be done and that I plan to do. But when I was using my Gram Deck a, a short time ago, um, the capacitors went on the preamp and so I had to replace them. This is the first time I've ever really replaced capacitors and I've tried it before and the, the operations never worked, but this is the first time I've done it and done it successfully. I was over at a friend's house who he works for a radio repair shop and uh, he's graciously allowed me to uh, you know learn some of his trade and uh, he doesn't mind showing me how to fix you know uh, radios or whatever so he taught me about capacitors now this uh, gram deck is obviously a British made machine and it has odd capacitors in that they're electrolytics but they don't have the plus or minus on them 
One side of the capacitor has a red mark where the uh, little lead comes out, and the other side has a black mark where the other lead goes out. So the red is obviously positive and the black is negative. So that's how I found out there are electrolytics, and there are four of them in there, and they're uh, 25 microfarad and 25 volt. Now, I had to replace those on mine, and when I replaced them and plugged it back in and tried it out, it worked, but I also didn't need the ground wire. So maybe there was something wrong, and when I replaced the capacitors, the hum went away, so I didn't have to have it grounded. I don't know. But replacing capacitors did it, and maybe it was a connection that was bad. I don't know. But anyway, it works fine now without the ground wire, so I don't need that. Now, if you're going to record a whole tape with the Grand Deck, uh, I think I described this in my YouTube clip, but I can't remember. Um, to rewind a whole tape, what you have to do is take the empty reel and take it off of the supply reel side and put it on the take-up side, and vice versa with the take-up reel that's full of tape and put it on the supply reel side. And then you just thread the tape back onto the empty reel in a straight line. Don't go through the uh, heads or anything. And what you're supposed to do is put this gram deck weight, which is just a little disc that's about an inch, inch and a half in diameter, and it has a hole in it where it fits onto the uh, reel table hub, onto the shaft. And when you start your turntable to, re uh, to turn at 78 speed at, the, at its fastest speed, you put the weight on there, and it causes friction on the turntable, on the uh, reel table, and it causes it to rewind at a fairly fast speed. So, um, I don't know if you have any kind of weight that you could put on there, and um, then you can uh, use that for a rewind weight if it's heavy enough. Also, I'm including in the Gram Deck uh, a makeshift microphone that I uh, put together with a uh, connection that fits onto the preamps plug. Um, and also, for the recording purposes, I'm including wow. a cable oh, with a RCA jacks on each end so that you can uh, plug Here's the mic to the dough quarter. Oh, that's funny. One end into the back of your uh, amplifier for playback purposes and the other end of that RCA jack cable oh. goes into a Y adapter that has a quarter inch headphone jack on the other end which will connect to a female to female plug and the other end of that female plug will plug into the quarter inch headphone type jack from your gram deck preamp so that you can play back tapes. Now for recording to your gram deck um, there is a set of leads that have banana plugs on one end and what I did was I made a makeshift uh, plug socket uh, that will fit those banana plugs that's connected to a cable and on the other end of that cable is a quarter inch headphone jack type well, plug that true. goes into your headphone jack on your amplifier. Now that is what you are going to record from because you need to have you need to have use of the volume control and the bass and tone control to uh, produce sound on your tape. You can't do it from the back of the amplifier because um, you need to uh, amplify the sound by using uh, the volume control. So it's going to kind of like be a little hit and miss as to uh, what is too loud, what is too soft, and what is just right as far as volume so that you can record successfully on a tape. Now I know you've collected a lot of tape recorders in your time, so you don't really need to uh, have too much detailed uh, inf uh, description and direction on what to do, how to run these machines. So I'm sure you'll have fun with it and uh, you know, learn how to run it, you know, just through hooking it up and everything. That's how I did. And I think the only other thing I want to tell you is uh, with the first batch of tape recorders I sent you, uh, the National Tape Recorder, I know you can uh, use the manual auto reverse switch on it, the little white switch that's in the function buttons, but I don't know if you found them, but I sent a couple of, uh, piece, a couple of pages of uh, foiled, uh, gummed back foiled strips that you could actually put on the oxide side of the tape and at the end of the reel uh, to um, reverse the tape automatically. It's got a little um, magnetic sensor on there that senses the foil tabs and if you put a little strip on, maybe about an inch and a half in, di in uh, length, you can um, have the machine reverse, auto reverse, without having to touch the button because I've done the same thing with mine. So um, I guess that's about all I wanted to uh, include in this tape and in this description. And uh, I hope you can get them off to get the ones that don't work. I hope you can get them to work and uh, that you'll have fun with them and you, you can add them to your collection. And I look forward to your YouTube clips on them. Ricky, you take care. Bye-bye. Amberola 1B signing off.
Radio, top 77 of all time, playing them through New Year's at Rewound Radio, plus a whole lot of extras tonight at 6 o'clock here at Rewound Radio. That's 6 o'clock Eastern. Rewind Radio. Oh, it's off camera, but I uh, switched it into Rewind because it was Rewind Radio. But anyway, oh my goodness, thank you so much. I didn't even expect the dough quarter. And he even has the manual as well, so I'm really excited. I remember the real master. I give a shout out to the real master. He used to have a dough quarter like this. I don't, I don't know if he got rid of it or what, but I remember he showed like I think it was a name that tape recorder video, and one of the pictures was that kind of dough quarter machine like that one right there. So, oh, and the phono tricks I really appreciate because since the phono tricks uses that weird microphone plug, you know. Um, I kind of made a makeshift cord running a 1 16th inch jack into the uh, thing, but it would, wouldn't stay in there well and stuff. So having the original mic is going to make it a heck of a lot easier to go about recording people using the tricks. A phono? Is it a record player? Boom! It's a trick! It's not a record player! Tricks! It's a trick! It's a real, real tape recorder. Whenever I first heard of the brand Phonotrix, I thought that, that they were like doing something like that, where it'd be like, Phono, no trick. It's a it's a tape recorder, not a record player, or something like that. Oh, I put the Phillips where I had this wall sack sitting. I have, yeah, I have very little room in here. I need to clean up and organize more. But anyway, okay. And also, they have a Tascam cassette deck in here. First of all, let's um. Let's let's zoom out the cam camera. It is zoomed out, right? Yeah. I don't know how well. I'm sorry, but it's probably just not showing much on the screen. This is gonna be one of those long videos because now my um, YouTube channel can do videos longer than 50, excuse me, minutes. So chances are this video is gonna be uber long. But anyway, let's um the phone tricks and the dog quarter. Which one should I get out first? Which one should I get out first? Out of the bubble wrap. Oh, the funnel tricks. I just now nah, get the funnel tricks out first. Okay. I'm glad I got this funnel tricks too. I did find out about the how it could rewind later on, long after probably I made that video. I just happened to put the switch the other way and was like, oh, it does rewind. But anyway, I'm glad I have this one because even though the other one worked, the amplifier was not very strong and there was lots of rust inside it from bad, bad batteries when I got it. I got it at an estate sale back in late 2009. The other one, you know, the one that looked like a duck with the pink head cover. Looked like a, a beak of a duck or something. Actually, my mom's the one who originally said it looked like a duck. But, um, so I'm glad to have this one, plus with this little speaker and all that. Oh my gosh, and it's in German, which just makes it like a million times better. First of all, I see that the manual is um, put onto this things to go in here. These paper, I mean these little paper protector things, three rings for the three ring binder. So um, I'm going to put it in there. It's all in German. I uh, probably can't read it well. Dirch in Angeren Vitrieb Setzen Sitch Bantili Sobistwab and den Laufleitchen Fest. I don't even know. If any of you all who speak German can even understand what I'm saying with my terrible pronunciation, there is all about the gram deck. Um, should I put it first or last? Here it is. Camera. Wait, that's yeah, that's the opening part. Okay, that hinge part is broken off. 
Oh, it's sideways in there. Okay. I don't have to do it this way, sorry. There's a note in there. I need to read it. And it's just kind of hung on the duct tape. Ricky, I wound the tape on the take up reel to a point to indicate how large a hub is needed on a reel for this machine to take up that to take up tape properly. Okay, here's some nice foam. Oh, good batteries as well. It's very nice foam. Might be able to fix some A tracks with it actually. Um, yeah, I got foam and sensing foil. I got some good A track related stuff too. Here's the Spico. Speaker Freak, this speaker has no visible tinsel leads or lines, so it looks really cool. Made in Western Germany, Speaker Freak. I'll give a shout out to Speaker Freak, the little speaker here. The speaker inside is actually much smaller than the case suggests. You look down inside of the speaker, probably only an, an inch and a half in diameter. A little speak. The microphone with the very odd phono tricks jack on the end and I don't know if it's crystal or dynamic I'm guessing dynamic just because of the weight because usually this is a little bit heavyish and crystal mics are usually feather weight they're so light we've got some alkaline batteries the same brand that was used as some of the batteries in the Stillman Transit Tape the CVS Pharmacy and then the trickery, the trick itself. If I can get this trick out, because the way these things are on the side, and lifting it up with the care not to break the case. Ah, uh, it, uh, it's kind of hard in there, you know. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I'm sorry, but this part of the video, you can't even really get a good glimpse of what I'm doing here. You know what? I'm going to... Maybe I'll flip this upside down. And I'll... Move this part of the case. And, oh, I see the control levers on that side, too. So they're fighting. They're both fighting together to keep it inside. Yeah, it's kind of wedged in there. Not so easy to get in and out. Well, wow, the case itself actually has a surprising amount of weight. Oh yes, here's the tricking machine. I think there's reels inside because I've heard a little sound. Oh yeah, there's little reels inside, little three inch reels. This is a, the three, it's funnel tricks can only take up to three inch reels, cannot take three and a half inch reels. So as well as a Stillman on transit tape. Okay, I'm just going to take this reel out wind all that tape around or something came unwound. A lot of it just came unwound from the reel during shipping. I gotta be very careful because it seems like it wants to oh uh, it was for some reason left with the pen controller in play position. Come to think of it, the one that I got from the estate sale back in late 2009 was also was left in the play position and then whenever I took it out of play position and saw that the pen controller with its special rubber had no notches in it at all, I was like, oh my goodness. I was pleasantly surprised. It seems that the rubber they used on it was a very good quality. Probably natural rubber. It's not black colored rubber either. It's like a pink rubber. Now this one doesn't have the pink head cover. What I might do is I might take the pink head cover off the other one and put it on this one. There we go. I'm wondering if there's some recordings on here. There might be. I don't know. You see the controller has, has a notch. See, look at that. No notch. Isn't that amazing? No notch. Okay. Oh, he had the amount of tape wound up. I was thinking like, I was thinking of like sticky tape in my mind when it said that on the note. Oh wow, this one says Fonatrix nice and full cool on there. Okay, let's put some batteries in it, and I'm sorry, I'm so Yeah, i got to move back, actually, for you to see it better on the video. I'm sorry, there's all this stuff over here. I'm, my room is really cluttered right now, you know. Oh, my gosh. 
so clean. I've never seen one this clean. There's like zero corrosion. Looks almost brand new. Man, whoever had this must have not used it much or at least took very good care of it because it's just so clean. Really nice. Okay, let's see. The volume control key, let's see. Battery. 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 And a battery. Now, let's put the only batteries in here. And then put the little cover on. Okay. Put the little cover on. Put it on the other way, actually. There we go. And see if it will come to laugh. Take this thing off. Ah, oh, this thing has a metal case except for the top and bottom covers. Okay, here we go. Okay, the first one I put it into is Rewind, believe it or not. Now, play. Take up real, and the, the little take up has very little tension, but it does have some take upness to it. Now, let's hook up our little speaker. See, it's all just little in miniature. Oh, again, it's out of view. See this? Oh, okay, see the speaker's almost at the bottom of the. You know, I want to zoom in. I really apologize. This is one of the worst as far as camera's concerned. See, I'm even in the way of blocking the screen. Okay, let's 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 try doing it that way. Okay. You gotta always watch where I where I step. That's one of the things of this room. Cause it's so cluttered. Okay. Anyway. Speaker plugs in there. Let's see if this amplifier makes sound. Ever so slight, I can hear an ever so slight sound. Wait, this rewind. No wonder. There it goes. In play, you can hear much more sound out of the speaker. Okay. Oh yeah, this one also has a uh, speed adjust knob, so that's pretty cool. We can kind of accommodate a rim drive speed variation, I guess, there. Um, these rubber bands, these rubber bands are really useful. These thick, small, dia small diameter rubber bands are useful for putting on top of uh, pinch rollers of the larger bit of real machines if the rubber's hardened or something. Okay, microphone's plugged in. And now, let's get the tape. I wonder if there's anything recorded on. Let's see. What thickness is this tape, anyway? Probably 1.5 mil, maybe 1 mil. But definitely not 0.5 mil. Yeah, probably on um, one mil. Okay, let's see. Again, I put it into rewind. Come on. Yeah, I think it's blank. Yeah, it's blank. Well, let's go ahead and make a recording. This is a test recording on a phone on tricks. Probably doesn't even have a model number. Real to real tape recorder. Let's see how this is. Amplifier is not very loud. I don't know if it's because of um, slightly leaky capacitors or if it just wasn't designed to be that loud, but it does work. If I could speak fluent German or any German at all, I would make this particular recording in German because this machine is made in Deutschland.
Now I'm making a recording at the super slow speed. I'm curious as to the audio quality and speed stability of this speed. It's very, very slow. I don't know. It's probably slower than 1 and 7 eighths. It might even be more like 15 sixteenths. It's even playing back slow. Wow. Very slow. Very slow indeed. Okay, so that's the phono trucks. Did I trick you? Anyway, now let's open up the dial quarter package. Let's get the phono tricks top and put it on. I put it on top of the caliphone. CR-3A, John Clark. And um, now let's get the dog quarter. Very little room right here. Complete with manual. Capstan Dram. Has automatic level control. This manual, um, the entire thing is put into that protective paper. And the bias, I'm sure it's DC because I remember seeing this one on eBay and it had a yeah, DC bias. <laughs> oh, that's too classic. It's funny. That is DC bias. Frequency response 200 to 500 hertz at 3 and 3 fourths. Not very good frequency response. This was probably one of the um, lower end um, of the Doe Quarter machines. It's probably, no doubt, still a neat machine nonetheless because reel to reels are just so cool. It doesn't matter as much. With cassettes, I get really annoyed when it's DC bias, but with reel to reels, I don't really get that bothered when it's DC bias because the coolness of the reel to reel wins over. And the cassette's not quite as cool as the real to real. Cassettes just aren't nearly as interesting. I mean, you know, I'm the quote quote cassette master. Cassettes aren't nearly as interesting as real to reels. Don't get me wrong, cassette recorder. It's still a nice cassette. Oh, there's another dope quarter microphone. He has two of them one for the Gram deck and one with this machine. Oh yeah, this is the thinner gray bubble wrap. This is a more thick gray bubble wrap over on that thing over there, which you can't see on the camera. Oh, it looks really nice. Really, oh wow, you can see on um, the, uh, uh, looks like a direct drive idler for the rewind. This might be a two motor machine or it might move it to right to the flywheel. It looks like the drive system is very simple, but it is a capstan driven recorder. No batteries, so. I'll have to come up with the batteries for this. Um, got some batteries around. So how do we put batteries in it anyway? DC 6 volt, 1.5 volt times 4. Does not say what size. Wow, if the frequency response only goes up to 5 kilohertz at 3 and 3 fourths, I bet it's really bad at 1 and 7 eighths. But the cool thing is, is whenever you do the batteries, you open up the entire recorder to reveal the innards, complete with the speaker. They could have used an oval speaker. They just used a round one by Pioneer, 8 ohm, 0.3 watts. And um, this motor is, this, the drive system and motor is very similar to what I found inside my Masterwork vertical reel-to-reel -reel portable which is now making me think that maybe the company that you originally made the masterwork might have been Doe Quarter and that's where the batteries go and Clydeside remember your Tupperware um, your crown Tupperware tape recorder uh, this bottom cover is that same kind of plastic it's all flexible and feels just like Tupperware and this even on this part it has some of that Tupperware plastic that's crazy! 
<laughs> I do like the Tupperware plastic though because it's more resistant against cracks and scratches and stuff probably. Okay, UM1, which is looks like D size. So we got some bat batteries over here. Hopefully they won't corrode. These Royal Vacs are known for corroding. I had a Royal Vac sitting in the Telmar I got from Amberola 1B. And one one of, one of those Royal Vacs, which still had power in it, was still good, corroded on its own. I was lucky enough to get it out and it was in between some others. The corrosion didn't make it to the battery contacts. Thank goodness, but it was ridiculous. These Royal Vacs i got to be very careful with. Wow, this thing grips the battery in there tight. Actually, well, I'm sure they're supposed to be gripping it. Okay, tight, but... It has an interesting way the way it grips to help keep the battery from flying inside the machine. They all go the same direction, which is nice. It makes it easy to put in and just very nice. Yeah, fuse, one for the... 110 to 117 volts and other for 220 to 240 volts so just like your voltage you just put a fuse in a different place it's interesting it's international almost international machine they don't have 100 volts for Japan even though it's ironically made in Japan but it would probably run fine off 110 volts out of man in the 110 volt mode just slightly lower voltage than normal to run it and you push this knob thing back inside Let's go ahead and take the microphone out of here. Cord packs inside. I don't know how long the uh, microphone cord was sitting in there, but there's no cord marks at all from the microphone cord, so it's making me wonder if if um, there's a slight cord mark on the back of the microphone itself, which is not the Tupperware plastic, but I'm wondering if the Tupperware plastic is resistant to cord marks. It's making me think they should have used that more because also it's resistant to cracks and stuff. It's a very, the condition is like mint condition, Spatch Bear. See, now each time I like, I come across conditions, I'm always reminded of different YouTubers. Spatch Bear, freaking speaker free. Okay. Amplifier runs. Take up real turns. Let's take off the um, cover, which I don't think is Tupperware plastic. I don't want to test it. It seems like a lot of times clear plastic tends to be brittle. I'm not going to try flexing that. I, if I cracked it, I would go crazy. Huh, this also has um, screw down reel lock holders, just like the Masterwork reel to reel. Let's see what else. And the take up reel is driven by the turning pinch roller. Just like the Masterwork Reel to Reel. If you haven't seen it, you need to see the video of the Masterwork Reel to Reel. I think the model is M750. And because of the extreme similarities of the transport design, the style of motor used, and everything, and the way the reel tables are done on this recorder and that of the Masterwork M750, I believe both these machines were made by the same parent company. They're both probably made by Doe Quarter, which I believe is the same as Onkyo. Um, let's see, I think it... Denki Onkyo Company Limited. Yeah, Doe Quarter's Onkyo. And so, it looks like the masterwork is made by Doe Quarter. And of course, both are DC biased with five transistor amplifiers. This one automatic level control, the other one manual level control. Um, okay, let's... Um, I could leave this real... Let's see if this rewind works. It works well. The drive system is extremely simple, almost as simple as a rim drive tape recorder. I'm going to have to show a video describing it in more detail for Clydeside to see, because I'm sure he'll he'll enjoy that a lot. Um, okay. I don't have any reels prepared to start from the start, so I'm going to take this ticket reel out and grab a set of three-inch reels that are already tied together. And test it. See how much DC bias S it has, etc. Well, I got the reels from the Fauna Tricks because it's conveniently right over here. And oh, the door quarter also has a uh, power cord right here, by the way. And um, uh, 
Oh, this tape does seem kind of thin. Maybe, let's see, maybe, maybe it is 0.5 mil. No, it might be 1 mil. 0.5 mil is extremely flimsy. This is quite flimsy, but I don't think as flimsy as 0.5 mil. I like 0.5 mil the best because it, you can fit most, most more of that on a reel and get a lot more recording time than you would otherwise. Because there's one thing about 3 inch reels is they're notorious for having very little short recording times, especially a rim drive recorder. Because the speed gets faster as more tape gets on the tape reel. Okay, it looks like there's some room from the reels, so it looks like this machine will accommodate up to three and a half inch reels. Actually, this other reel might be three and a half inch. Indeed, it is. It will be too big for the funnel tricks, but just right for other machines. Um, by the way, with 0.5 mil tape wound up all the way to the brim on a three and a half inch reel, it will all the way to the brim will probably be ever so slightly more than like a C60 cassette when running at three and fourths. Let's see if we can hear the recording. No, it's on the other side. Never mind. The phone tricks recording is on the other side. Well, let's plug in the microphone. Which is also the same kind of microphone and remote thing that the jack is on the Masterwork. Oh my goodness, this machine and that Masterwork have so many similarities. It's crazy. The flywheel is very well lubricated because the capstan keeps, keeps spinning around for a period of time after I turn it off. Good. I find that the amp is kept active and that the on-off switch on the mic only turns on and off the motor. That is my favorite way of the design. I have to stop it, then put the record switch, hold it, and go to play. The light is not flickering. I don't know why. Now it just lights up steadily whenever I'm recording. Okay, um, well that's probably because it's automatic level control, so they feel that the light yeah, it just says record lamp, not record level. It just lights up to show that it's recording. It does not flicker. But being that it's automatic level control, it's not as important to flicker as it would be if we were manual. Of course, manual is better if you have an actual meter or one light for normal, one light for overdrive. I'm talking like crazy. This video is going to be like over an hour long, or at least probably over 30 minutes long. I mean, if anyone's going to sit through the entire video and watch the whole thing, that would be quite surprising. I mean, like, wow. Anyway, let's see how this is. Okay. Cue in the view. I always like cue in the view. Now it just lights up steadily whenever I'm recording. Okay, um, well, that's probably because it's automatic level control, so they feel that the light. Yeah, it just says record lamp, not record level. It just lights up to show that it's recording. It doesn't flicker. That being that it's automatic level control, it's not as important to flicker as it would be for a manual. Of course, manual is better if you have an actual meter. Or one light for normal, one light for overdrive. I'm talking like crazy. This video is going to be like over an hour long, or at least probably over 30 minutes long. I mean, if anyone's going to sit through the entire video and watch the whole thing, that would be quite surprising. I mean, like, wow. Anyway, let's see how this is. Okay. Whoa, did you see that? The reels just went back a little bit when I stopped. That is crazy. Clyde side's going to be like, whoa, I want to see how that works. I see how it works right there. The motor, which is still slightly in motion, goes and hits the supply reel. And the motor shaft itself, touching the supply reel's rim, acts as the brake for the supply reel. And um, so you can say this machine is partial rim drive. Capstan drive with rim drive flywheel and rim drive rewind. Rim drive rewind, rim drive capstan flywheel to capstan drive. Pinch roller driven take up reel. We're going to sit through the entire video. No and fast forward. The whole Crazy. Very simple design. Let's take off the reels. Because um, I'm going to try. Actually, no, the, um, the TK6 already has reels with it. So I'll leave these on for now. And I'll put the cover on. 
which is not fully clear plastic. It's tinted with a slight bluish like um, hue. Although it's not dark, it's very clear. It looks pretty cute. That's the right way, right? There. Pretty nice looking recorder. Interesting recorder. Funny looking case style, too. Just the way it goes and then the slope vent. It's kind of funny looking. <laughs> and the plastic is impact resistant, so that's very nice. And it can be picked up by that metal handle. Let's put the cover on the Phonatrix. Trickery. Oh, and then we'll get the Grundig TK6 and see what we can do with it. With all its German, which looks so cute. Okay, Deutschland, give it your best shot. Okay. So here we got the power cord. I'm assuming it must be set for 110 volts. We got a European plug on here. Battery goes there. Speaker, microphone go there. And AC power go or no, probably the speaker goes there because I recognize that jack. And then it shows a basic pinout for your DIN, your input, and your ground. Okay. Okay. Okay, well. Now, if I were to put batteries in here, would I be able to put them in here? Because likely I'm going to be wanting to run this on batteries. So, we got to see if I can put batteries in it or not. Or do you have to use an external battery? Because there is a battery symbol there. You might have to use an external battery. Which would be crazy. But I'm starting to think that's probably it. Well, actually, I might be able to take this part on the back off. I just really don't want to break anything. i got to be very, very careful. I think that handle is glued on. Does it just come pop out? It doesn't seem to want to pop out. I know the back comes off to reveal the speaker and stuff. Um, because I've seen videos of this machine on YouTube. This model. But I'm not sure how to get it off. If you just pull that outward. You're so afraid, it's just... Okay, I just... I don't know. At least I don't have to worry about over-volting it, because if it was set to 220, and I put it into the 110, 120, it would only get half the voltage, and not twice. I just have to find, I have a... a adapter for the foreign connector down there I think adapter that will take a European plug there it is there we go. Oh. okay I got an adapter that will take a European plug we'll plug this in and see if it works see if it will work off this plug at least and I see no action from the meter so even though it's apparent I set to the on mode it might not be running off the power cord well that's the power switch I think it still won't do anything The meter's not responding, I hear nothing in the way of operating it.
Gee, I don't know. Maybe it just won't work off the power cord at all. I might have to run it off the battery plug. Or if it can just, if it will run on battery. Maybe it has batteries in it. I don't know, probably not, but maybe it does. Let's see if that will work. No, it doesn't have batteries in it. You gotta be able to get this back off. Oh, there we go. Almost broke the catch. Surprised that I didn't. Yeah, there's a couple, there's a fuse in there. Yeah, believe it or not, this apparently has no battery compartment whatsoever. Although it looks like there's enough room inside for a battery pack. So I think that the battery pack, and I see a, p a couple of places where something would screw in it, but where it has been unscrewed. So apparently it would have a place for a battery pack, and somebody, for some reason, snatched the battery pack right out of the thing. which is not good but I can I can try to make a makeshift battery pack for it which will be what I'm going to probably have to do if I want to run it on batteries I need to make a makeshift, makeshift battery pack and I'll make a makeshift battery pack and I'll run it that way in order to get it to work on batteries this video is well over an hour long and 1.3 gigabytes oh goodness I'm taking too much on the computer